Um, my name is David MacDonald and I'm from Australia. I was born in a town called Borough and I lived most of my childhood in the country between Adelaide and Melbourne. I'm a scientist and I am a mathematical modeler uh, and I investigate the impacts of various uh, human and natural forces on ecosystems and I use mathematics and statistics to build electronic models um, and assistants will put those models into the computer and, and create the simulations that show what might happen at various trophic levels in the ecosystems that are affected. I first discovered uh, problems with electric heaters when I was a child, probably eight years old. And um, as I grew up, I discovered a few more uh, electrical items that made me feel a little sick and perhaps a little um, unstable. And so I simply avoided those things. As I reached adulthood, uh, computers were becoming more popular in um, workplaces and uh, I discovered that when I used computers I had a similar sort of problem with the heaters that I experienced when I was young, um, except that I felt more ill, uh, Ill when I uh, was using them. So uh, when I was in my mid-twenties I uh, began to use computers, but I needed to use a special type of computer to avoid the problem that I now have. My employers uh, have always known that I had uh, this problem with electrical and uh, radio frequencies, and always accommodated that so that I was able to do my work, uh, which I mainly used pencil and paper and, and uh, the results from the computer. And I would give those, uh, that work to my assistants who would then use the computers. And uh, so it was, it was fairly easy for uh, the majority of my scientific career to um, circumvent the problem that I have with electromagnetic radiation. I think in the beginning it was very hard for people to understand. For me it was very simple. Um, it is an allergy, like a lot of allergies people have. I cannot explain why I am completely allergic to um, seafood. There is nobody else in my family that has a problem, my extended family, but I am. For David it's the same problem. He is allergic to radiation, so I had no problem understanding. Uh, other people, no, it uh, is a matter of disbelief because you cannot see that a person is feeling ill. You cannot see a headache. I can see from his eyes when he's not feeling well. Sometimes he is completely white in the face and I know he's feeling sick. But for most people it's very hard to see. My symptoms were uh, initially simply nausea and headache, uh, but when, when my condition became worse in 2006, I suffered from eczema, uh, an itchy scalp, uh, from numbness on the left side of my body, and from extreme nausea and tiredness, as well as migraine headache. So it was, a, it was a change that occurred at a particular time that may, the symptoms became much worse.
That, that is true. It, it is amazing. Since my condition worsened in 2006 and 2007, I became more sensitive to low levels of electromagnetic radiation. And so quite low levels that would not affect most people, uh, I can feel. On the farm, I don't feel desperately ill. Uh, the, the, the levels of the emissions 30 kilometers away are not very high. They're still high enough to operate mobile phones and so on. But there are some parts of the property I don't feel comfortable, so uh, I avoid them or I spend small amounts of time in those places. Uh, but, for example, when people drive into our, uh, onto our farm, there is a sign asking for all the portables to be turned off. Because if that's not the case, I will feel it when they're driving half a kilometre away. 500 meters away. I will feel it in my head and my face will turn numb just because they have their mobile phone turned on. Uh, so I, we always ask people to turn their mobile phones off and that reduces the problem um, dramatically. Of course I had um, some concerns whether there was a significant psychological impact here and not a physiological impact. Uh, but the steps I took were to record very carefully when I felt ill and which particular symptoms I had at particular times and then search for the environmental conditions which prevailed at those times. And I, after observing these things um, for many years, I took some advice from an expert who measures electromagnetic radiation and I first of all uh, rented a meter which I used uh, to see what sorts of levels of radiation there were and which types in those locations and I later bought one of those measuring devices and over many observations over many uh, on many occasions in many different places I was able to discover which of the environmental factors were common across those situations where I had particular symptoms. The, the process that I went through with my employer um, was uh, that the assistance that I had previously been given uh, was taken away and I was required to use computers and other electronic equipment that made me feel feel very ill and in fact over two years there were a series of trials that uh, I was uh, asked to undertake and, and I undertook them willingly because I wanted to do my work um, but those trials made me feel very sick and have have increased my sensitivity to uh, existing levels and whatever new levels of, of electromagnetic radiation there might be. Um, over a period of several years, I attempted to negotiate with my employer to uh, reinstate the assistance or to provide shielding, um, as I had installed in my own home, to mean that I, so that I would not be exposed to as much of the radiation and therefore would not be sick and therefore I could do my work. But as a result of, um, I, I guess, a breakdown in communication, um, we were making no progress, so I decided to take the action to, to go to the court. Taking uh, a legal course, uh, taking legal action, should not be done lightly. It is an extremely draining of energy, of financial resources, and there are many aspects of legal cases which are quite different from normal life. Uh, there is an adversarial position, it's one side against the other. There are attempts from both sides to put a case uh, without necessarily sticking to all of the facts. In uh, each side there may be attempts to distort things in favour of that side. My position was always to tell the truth. And by telling the truth, it is easy to repeat the truth. 
because you don't have to worry about what you said last time if it was the truth. And that was my point of view right through the case. And I was very naive about legal matters until this case. And I've learned a great deal about what legal processes are about. And it's not necessarily about the truth. One hopes that the truth wins, and in, in this case it did. But it's not necessarily the case that the judgment comes out in favour of the, of the true position. And uh, that was a little disturbing for someone of my age to learn for the first time, that uh, you could not trust that what the other side was going to do would be truthful uh, in the sense of everyday understanding of truth. The truth that they use is legal truth, procedures within the court. It's the truth regarding the law and what their role is in opposing my position. And that was an interesting learning experience and I would not advise people to, to undertake that unless they were very committed and, um, and they had reasons other than themselves to go through that. Because from my point of view, it is more important now for other people that this decision has been made in my favour. It's not important for me personally. What is important for me is that I have this condition and I have to live with that and I'll do what I need to do to overcome it. But there are many people who don't have the possibility to move house. I had to buy a new house. I live on a farm now. I used to live in the city. Um, it's not possible for most people to do that. They don't have the resources to do that. Um, so I hope that the pain that I've been through, that especially my family has been through, will be worth it for other people who don't have the capacity to, to go through this.